The term powwow derives from an Algonquin Indian word, powwow, which is the coming together of medicine men and spiritual leaders in a occurring ceremony. Traditional dancing is one of the most common styles seen at powwows and is considered the warrior's dance style. This style is not strictly adhering to the past, but refers to a style that developed from the original dance. I haven't been dancing that long. I started learning two years ago. I, um, and that's when I was given my first shawl to dance at inner tribals and to start paying attention and learn. And that's when my auntie and my uncle took me with them nearly every powwow. And I would sit with them. They would introduce me to everyone at the powwow, um, what you call the powwow family. And uh, that was kind of like my practice round that first year, was just getting to know everyone, everyone getting to know my face too. Um, and from there, it was probably the beginning of this year, I would say, in January, where I really started going to powwows, dancing the, um, with my regalia on and, and being in the grand entry and so forth. So it, it hasn't been a long time, but I've really enjoyed it. I've been dancing probably about uh, 30 years, 35 years. And I started out dancing when I was a young kid. Well, this latest time, um, I've been dancing for, I would say about 19 years. Um, I began dancing, I went back into the dance arena in 1991 after I became sober and after I met my husband, Dave Larson. Well, I started as a child. My grandmother used to really, uh, Jesse Larson used to work with me about dancing and then uh, when I was uh, about middle school, she moved to the Twin Cities and uh, used to take me, it's funny because when I started dancing in groups, it was here in the Twin Cities. Yeah, the men's traditional dance started, I would say, among the Omaha tribe as a part of the Omaha, Omaha Wachipi, they called it, uh, the Omaha war dance. And it was actually a warrior dance and it uh, kind of, uh, uh, spread across the Plains Indian tribes and uh, Lakota got a hold of it and uh, started the Omaha War Dance Society and that's where the traditional men's traditional dance started probably back in the late 1800s. The Sneak Up um, was a, a reenactment of how they snuck up on the enemy and then uh, the women's traditional actually the women had a they had a war dance too called the victory dance or the scalp dance, which were where they, they danced with the scalps that were taken. And scalping was actually started by Europeans, but once it grew all over the North America, then uh, everybody started doing it. Then they, they, uh, the scalps were, that were brought back, uh, the sister or the wife of the warrior would dance with that scalp and they had a victory dance and that's how women's traditional dance started. And I just want to share something. I learned from uh, an Anishinaabe uh, friend, a uh, co-dancer, about what traditional dancing is. He said the first human that was sent to Mother Earth by the Creator was told, he said, how, how will I know where I belong? And the Creator said, you'll know because when you come to the Earth, step hard and if the Earth holds you, that's where you belong. If you don't belong there, you'll pass on to another part of the earth and you do the same thing, step hard. And if you belong there, that's where you'll stay. So the person did that and when he came to this part of the, the world, the, what we call, now call the Western Hemisphere, stepped hard and Mother Earth held the first person. The person looked out and saw all the beauty that was here already and said, I have to recognize all the beauty here. So it took another light step to honor all the other living beings that were here before us as humans. And that's the dance, a hard step and a light step. I've heard many things, um, but what I've been taught is what I will tell you. What I've been taught as the first one is when we're dancing, when we're moving our feet, it's almost, well it is, like a baby kicking its mother's stomach. The baby, it would be me, the dancer. The mother would be our earth, the ground that we are dancing on. And when you hear the drum, that's the heartbeat of the mother. 
So as we're moving, we're kicking our mother's stomach. It tickles her. It doesn't hurt, it tickles her. But that's another reason why we have to be aware of how we're moving our feet. We don't want to just slam our feet down because probably that would hurt. But it is a very significant and, and intentional movement that we make with our feet, as light as we can be and as soft as we can step down on her. That's one teaching that I've had um, for our dance, for our feet. There is one movement that a traditional dancer as a woman does and it's called scrubbing. And that's where we stand still and we simply go up and down. And that dates back to the times when our men would go out and hunt. So the men would go hunt and the women would be at the camp. We'd take care of the camp. Well, while they're away, whether it's for hunt or for a possible war, whatever it would be, mostly for hunting, the women would dance up and down. And so on our down movement, we're waiting for our man. On the up movement, we're looking for our man over the hilltop, waiting for him to come back. Mohawk had that, it's called the Mohawk hair, hairstyle. They had their hair uh, cut like that, like a roach. Uh, you've seen it in the movies. It's called the Mohawk hairdo, that one. It probably started from there, and then it became the uh, headdress of the traditional dance, today the men's dance. Northern traditional usually have a bustle. Well, they do have a bustle. Southern traditional don't have a bustle. Uh, they'll have everything but a bustle. The uh, outfit is a little bit different, and the style is a little bit different, too. It's more of a stately dance, if you will. Uh, traditional dancers, they move around a lot, <clears throat> go up and down. Uh, uh, Southern style dancing, uh, it's more, uh, they, don't, they don't go up and down as much as the northern traditional and the songs are a little bit different songs are a little bit slower and they the beat is just a little different too. I know that there are certain items that a traditional dancer as a woman should have um, but the significance of them is not something I've learned yet I have been taught little things like you'll see on a traditional woman on the backs of the regalia, they'll have a second belt other than the conch belt. And that belt is to hold uh, a knife and two other items. And that was not so much for protection and not because we're hunters, but because we've always, we're always going to need a knife. How has traditional changed? Northern traditional, has, uh, the outfit has basically remained the same. You have your uh, roach, you have the uh, bustle, uh, bells, leggings, or, you know, they may not wear leggings, but I have seen a lot of change in other little things. Um, boy, it's changed a lot. Um, I guess, you know, pretty much nowadays, you know, there's, there used to be a lot of like really big rules when you were a traditional dancer. I think there were a lot more rules about the order that you danced in, I remember back in the day, it was ladies with buckskin dresses were first, and then it goes by age, elders, etc., and then down to youngest. And people don't really follow that anymore. I think there's a lot of new dancers that don't, have never heard those, those teachings, and <clears throat> it's kind of sad. The other thing that I think has changed is that our regalia is much more, um, it's much more pan, pan tri tribal. It's not so much, you know, you can't really, distinguish anymore what's supposed to be Anishinaabe or what's supposed to be Dakota or what's supposed to be Crow or whatever you just it's pretty it's pan pan tribal now you know so I think that's some of the changes like my wife says you know uh, we're getting all mixing of our regalia uh, men's regalia men's uh, traditional bustles at least are getting bigger and bigger and more and more uh, involved and uh, when I was a young guy a lot of the older guys didn't even wear eagle feathers. They didn't wear fe uh, feathers in the roach on the head. But again, the dance and the singing meant so much that they went out there with the best they could do. And so I didn't see a lot of this when I was growing up, it, it, but it's becoming more and more uh, involved. What I do see is with the traditional dance, we have a lot of, I guess, opportunity 
to dance alongside another person, another woman, another traditional dancer, and talk and maybe learn some pointers. And I think that's unique to the other dances because with shawl, you don't have the opportunity to dance beside somebody the whole time. You're constantly moving. With jingle dress, it's even difficult with that. So I think we have that uniqueness with our dance that we can still have a, some community um, between us as we're dancing and, and watch each other. What I would like to see, I would love to see a lot more young people doing the traditional dance. And I think I'm pretty sure it's because we don't, well, we don't see the younger people because they are able to do the jingle dress dance or the fancy shawl movement, whereas an elder lady would have more of a difficult time with that, especially the fancy shawl. Well, in the future, I see it evolving more, I think. Um, I think there'll be, there'll be a return to traditional, you know, like old style traditional, because I see that now at powwows, you'll see, you know, old, old style jingle dress and then new jingle dress. I think there'll be, you know, you see Southern style, you see Northern style in the traditional women's traditional categories and men's traditional categories. And I hope that there'll, I think there'll be a real return to some of the, that, that not so much melding of categories, but maybe back to more traditional ways of, you know, of dancing. I just wanted to say that uh, uh, it's, it's an honor to dance in the circle. It's an honor to uh, listen to the songs sung to know about the songs, that uh, what they mean. And uh, I've made a lot of good friendships there. I met a lot of good people, had a lot of fun times dancing. And uh, I see people, when I'm out there dancing, I see people out there in the crowd and it looks like they would love to be out there. But they're just a little timid. So I would always, uh, you know, encourage people to get out and dance and just try it out and see what they think of it. It's a lot of fun. Watch it.